Hey everyone, Papa Bear here. So, today we're going to be talking about getting ready and prepping for your outdoor grow today. I don't mean going out and, you know, getting your grow going outside right now. So, stop. Because you'll kill your plants. At least around where I am. So, ah, wait one second, okay? So, what we're talking about is prepping, choosing your spot, and all the rest of this stuff. Um, and I'm going to end up giving you some, you know, tips and some tricks. So, you know, when it comes to growing your, your plants outside, what you want to do is you want to look at the spot where you're at first and know your environment. Yes, I know I've ended up talking about that before, but it's crucial so that you know what you could possibly be dealing with uh, later on down the road in your grow. The reason why I say that is because there's the insects that you're going to have to think about. There's the lighting you're going to have to think about, water access, all that kind of stuff. So... You know, you have to keep in mind about that kind of thing. So, first step is lighting and location. You want to make sure you're in a spot where you want to have as much light exposure as you can. The reason why you want to have as much light exposure as you can is because, well, like any other plants, all the plants need abundances of light um, that helps with photosynthesis, breaking down your soil, all the rest of that stuff. So you want to make sure you have a nice, you know, a nice big area where you can end up having a lot of light, no trees in the way, and that kind of thing. Um, step two or, you know, another thing to look at is your soil. I mean, come on, guys. Come on, everyone. You know, <laughs> soil is king when it comes to growing outside. It's, you know, going to be your bread and butter. You know, that's where your plants are getting their nutrients, their food, and everything. So you want to have properly amended soil. For you chemical growers out there, you want to make sure you have your, your pots in the right spots. You want to make sure your medium's ready, and then you want to make sure newts. Another thing you want to do when you're growing outside um, is make sure you have a big enough container or flower pot or, you know, something like that unless you're going directly into the ground. Uh, me personally, I don't go directly into the ground because around here it's a real sandy, sandy area. Um, especially once you end up going like maybe a foot short, uh, well a foot down into the, you know, into the ground. Um, so I end up growing in bags. Uh, the reason why I do that, outside of the fact that the soil around here is basically really sandy and clay-like, um, is because you want to have your soil in that container, uh, readily available to your plant and that it's not going to go straight into the ground. The reason why you want that is because your soil is going to be your food for your plants. Uh, now, soil prep. Soil prep is really going to be key if you're going to be growing organically. Um, you want to give your soil the proper cook time and the proper mixture. So, if you make sure that you're giving yourself enough time for your soil to cook off or to compost and have all that good stuff 
just ready for your plants, then hey, great. Um, you know, if you're doing big amounts of soil like I am, because uh, I'll fully admit the bags that I grow in are about the same size as a bag of Pro Mix, if not bigger. So yeah, you want to give your time, your soil time to break down, get all that, you know, get all the good microbial and fungal growth going on in it and you want to make sure that you know you've given yourself enough time so if you're mixing soil the same amounts that i am per bag you want to give your soil at least two weeks to compost or cook off easiest way to tell um when it's done is to Go out once a day, once every couple of days. Give your, you know, open up, you know, whatever it is that you're holding your soil in. Take a look inside and see if you have, you know, a bit of a mold or something like that. If you do, mix it up. Which leads on to my next tip. Mixing. Yes, mixing is key. Doesn't matter what growing aspect you're going with. Doesn't matter if you're doing the lasagna technique for, you know, no-till gardening, or if you are putting all of your amendments all through your vessel, okay? Um, you have to make sure that your soil is ready, okay? Just keep in mind how you're gonna be growing what kind of system you're using so on so on so on uh, another thing you want to do with your soil prep is make sure you have enough drainage um, and why well nobody likes root rot you know if you end up wondering after you mix your soil if you're gonna have enough drainage if you ever end up questioning that, add a little bit more perlite or, you know, grab, grab extra river rocks or whatever, you know, stones, so on and so forth. Add that in there and give your soil a nice big mix. And make sure you have that all the way through. It's for aeration, drainage, all the rest of that stuff that you want to make sure that you have going on. Okay. So, the next tip I have is feeding regimes. When it comes to feeding your plants, it doesn't matter if you're watering your plants with just straight water, if you're making uh, hormone teas or fermented plant extract teas, seed sprouted teas, compost teas, doesn't matter try to keep an eye on your plants the reason why you want to keep an eye on your plants and make sure that you have a proper feeding regime is so that you can know exactly when you need to add your teas or anything else and have everything ready to go um your feeding regimes can end up you know changing from time to time try to have your tea recipes ready and always make sure that you stick to your feeding regimes because your plants will get used to it another thing that I like to try to do is make sure that I have my plants in a bit of a wind tunnel, a bit of a windy area. Which comes to my next tip is airflow. The airflow for where you're going to be growing can be crucial. And the reason why that is, is because it helps you combat insects. Such as, you know, lacewing flies and stuff like that. You know, 
um, if you can, try to have a cover crop where you are inviting predatorial species of insects, you know, um, ladybugs, dragonflies, stuff like that, because they'll help you in the long run. Uh, and how that'll happen is because normally they end up eating the insects that will end up, you know, <laughs> getting into your plants and really make life hell. So, you know, like ladybugs, they'll go through, they'll eat other bugs. They're a predatory insect, they're a good thing. The same thing with dragonflies, you know, they'll go, they'll end up eating other flies. Mosquito hawks, those really, really big mosquitoes that can get to be about the size of your hand when you see them flying along. Shouldn't be Ontario's provincial bird. Um, yeah, they're great because they'll not just eat mosquitoes and other mosquitoes, but they'll eat other insects too. Praying mantises, you gotta watch out for them because they will bite you, but... They're great. They eat anything, including spider mites, uh, you know, other various insects, all the rest of that kind of stuff. A uh, little bit of a pro tip, make sure you have the proper nematodes. Um, nematodes are crucial in some aspects if you start noticing that you have uh, fungus gnats, um, other, you know, gnats and mites and insects that'll burrow into your sand, your, your, not your sand, <laughs> your, uh, your soil and end up eating the roots and all the rest of that stuff. So make sure if you start noticing that you have these going on, make sure you get some nematodes. Um, another tip is knowing what cover crop you want to put on. That can get tricky because you're going to be using it like a living mulch. Because a lot of people end up getting hung up on NPK. Okay, NPK. Nitrogen, phosphorus, you know, potassium. And uh, when it comes to that, you really don't want to worry too much about that because your cover crop is going to help with that. Some cover crops that will actually help you with nitrogen uptake and stuff like that during the vegetative cycle is, believe it or not, clovers. Yes, clovers, you know, four leaf things. Yeah, clover is a night what's called a nitrogen fixator. Nitrogen helps with the vegetative cycle of your growth. And if you have your stuff dialed in somewhat for your area, great. Purple clover, white clover, those are two of the best things to have because they'll pull the nitrogen out of the air and they'll end up, you know, putting that into the soil. And then when your soil ends up getting you know, when your cover crop gets big enough, you can use it like a living mulch. And you can end up cutting it back just like you do your grass. And put that goodness back into the soil. You don't have to go all King Kong on it and start, you know, really trying to drown that stuff in there. Because it's going to end up leaching all that goodness back into the, you know, back into the grow, back into the container, all the rest of that stuff. Okay, now, make sure your pH is on point. Yes, make sure your pH is on point. You want to have your soil pH around 6.5 to 7. Uh, the reason why is because that's the Goldilocks zone for a lot of your nutrients that you're going to be having you know, in your soil. That's going to end up being, you know, help with your nutrient uptake and stuff like that because that's how your plants eat. So, a good way to do that is with dolomite lime. Put a little bit of dolomite lime in your soil. 
top dress with it once alone. Don't constantly add dolomite wine to your, you know, your teas and don't always, you know, go overly big with the dolomite wine. You want to keep an eye on it because it can backfire on you and make your soil pH too low. And when your soil pH is too low, you're going to end up having the same problem if it's too high. You'll end up with nutrient lockout, you'll end up with def uh, deficiencies, all the rest of that stuff. No one wants that. People want to end up growing big plants. And with that comes prep. And when you end up doing your prep right, you will end up succeeding. Anyway, everyone. This is Papa Bear, and as always, take care of each other.